Okay. Well, my name's Dave Munger and I'm a librarian with Sacramento Public Library. Welcome to this month's genealogy workshop, Genealogy Resources at Sacramento Public Library, presented by yours truly, Dave Munger. Unfortunately, our scheduled speaker, Mary Sales, had to cancel due to illness, so I'll be filling in as speaker today. We have rescheduled her talk, What City Directories Can Tell Us, for March 25th of next year. Okay, a few quick notes again. All microphones have been muted to limit distraction. I'll change the setting to let you unmute yourself after the talk concludes so you can ask me questions. Today's session will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel indefinitely. I'll put the link to our YouTube channel in the chat. Because we are posting this video for privacy reasons, we will not enable you to turn on your own video. I will try to keep an eye on chat in case any of you have technical issues during the presentation, but please keep in mind that I'll be doing double duty as presenter. I appreciate your patience. I'll save most of your questions for the Q&A after the presentation, but I may answer the occasional question that catches my eye and fits in well with what I'm talking about at the moment. For questions about future genealogy presentations or to receive a copy of the handout, please email contact at saclibrary.org. I'll also post a copy of the handout to the chat for download. Okay, let's get started with genealogy resources at Sacramento Public Library. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and post the handout one more time. There's the handout, and then I will also post the link for YouTube presentations, and, and also it shows our, uh, our email address. Okay, now I'm going to share screen. Not as experienced at this as I'd like to be. Bear with me, please. I'll have it up just a moment. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so genealogy resources at Sacramento Public Library. So what will today's presentation cover? I'm gonna cover our genealogy collection, our monthly online genealogy programs, the Sacramento Room, our newspaper archives, our genealogy databases, and how I do obituary searches. Okay. Oh. 
This is not going to be easy without a helper, so uh, please bear with me. All right. So who am I? I'm David Munger, the Adult Services Librarian at the Central Library of the Sacramento Public Library. I'm in charge of the genealogy collection. I host our monthly online genealogy programs. I do a lot of work in the Sacramento room. I, I work with, uh, our, with uh, James, our, our archivist, a lot. And I answer lots of reference questions that come to our Ask a Librarian and our contact teams. And I handle most of the obituary requests that we receive. And who are we? We're Sacramento Public Library, originally established as a subscription library in 1857. It was transferred over to the city of Sacramento and became a free public library in 1879. We have 28 locations and we serve the county of Sacramento, the cities of Citrus Heights, Gulp, Isleton, Elk Grove, Rancho Cordova, and Sacramento. Uh, we serve most of Sacramento County, but with the exception of the city of Folsom. The city of Folsom, they have their own library that we have a close relationship with. Um, we honor their cards, they honor ours. We share, uh, we share uh, materials with them, but they are, they are separate from us. And they are outside of our service area. And, and uh, that can matter in certain circumstances. Okay, so how can you contact us? Now, don't worry about having to scribble down every bit of information on this page because it's all in the handout. Just about all of what's in this presentation is in the handout, so don't worry about that. So uh, come to our website at saclibrary.org um, for basic questions about the library, our programs, resources, and our accounts. You can contact our customer service number or email contact at saclibrary.org. And for reference questions, use our Ask a Librarian page at that email, at, at that um, web address, just uh, saclibrary.org. Um, go to contact us, uh, contact us at the link at the top of the page and find Ask a Librarian. Or you can visit us at Central Library, 828 I Street in Sacramento. Okay, so do you need a library card to use all of our genealogy resources? You do not need a library card to ask a reference question or request an obituary. We, we don't check that when you, uh, you send a request into us. And you don't need a library card to visit our genealogy collection or the Sacramento room. You do need a library card to check out materials. However, materials in our genealogy collection and in the Sacramento room are for library use only and may not be checked out. And you do need a library card or one of our e-cards to use many of our online resources, such as our Sacramento Bee online archives. You must visit us in person to get a library card or e-card. All right, so now let's talk about the genealogy collection. It's big. So what you see there in the picture, that's um, a bit less than half of the total genealogy collection. All the other side of those shelves, plus um, one side of another set of shelves uh, beyond is our genealogy collection. So um, about the genealogy collection, it's a specialized reference collection to support family history research. It's located on the second floor of the Central Library, and that's at 828 I Street. It consists of more than 4,000 items, including books, periodicals, newsletters, and vertical files. We have a big filing cabinet for a bunch of vertical files. And the majority of the items were donated by the Genealogical Association of Sacramento, also known as GAS, on June 29th, 2016. All materials are non-circulating and are to be used at the Central Library only. There are some duplicates of some items that you, you could request to check out, however. And it's available whenever the Central Library is open. Most of these items are in our online catalog. So you can uh, go to our website and do a search and uh, see what you can find that might interest you or that might be helpful. 
So scope and content of the collection. Our collection focuses primarily on United States source and research materials with an emphasis on California. Items included, so I have a question here and I'll answer it. Will the library's collection ever be digitized? This genealogy collection is huge and it would require an enormous effort to digitize it. Um, in addition, there would probably be some copyright issues. So um, that is, um, that's unlikely to happen, very unlikely. So items included in the genealogy collection consist of the following. Standard resources useful for learning genealogical methodology and for organizing and pursuing research. And this includes research guides, handbooks, and finding aids, uh, bibliographies, record inventories, directories, and holdings lists of repositories with genealogical collections. And there you see um, some of the folders in our, our big file cabinet. And uh, atlases, maps, gazetteers, and place name guides. Um, you may, in your researches, you may run across the name of a place that no longer exists. Well, the way to find out more about it is with a gazetteer uh, for the appropriate time and place, like that gazetteer of the state of New York, 1824. And we have lots of periodicals with genealogical content and their indexes. Uh, and that is just a small fraction of what we have right there. So, and then um, the other category of items we have are, are items essential for identifying and distinguishing specific individuals, reconstructing families and linking them from one generation to the next. And these materials include civil and church vital records, cemetery, mortuary, and other records related to deaths, census records or their substitutes, family Bible record extracts, compiled family genealogies and collective biographies, county histories containing biographies of individuals. Oh, and we do have the, uh, the, the Mayflower silver books, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, military and selective service records, court records, land and property records, tax lists, passenger lists and migration records, naturalization and citizenship records, ethnic and national group records, newspaper extracts, those are from the Sacramento Bee there, voting records, And we can't move on from the collection without opening at least one book. This is a really interesting set of books, Sacramento County Coroner's Records Collection, 1887 to 1969. Unfortunately, some of these are missing, which is kind of distressing. I, we've looked for them, but uh, in any case, uh, this particular one is from November 1911 to August 1929. It's a fascinating book to read. I really just chose this page at random, uh, but it's full of interesting stuff. Um, so it, it, this one covers uh, November 1923 uh, through August 1925. And there are a lot of, a lot of car accidents. Cars were pretty new, um, much more dangerous, I think, than people uh, realized. Um, and, uh, and then lots of train accidents. Uh, titles in the collection can be browsed. Well, you can search for them online. Um, uh, you can find them in our catalog. And uh, we, uh, we have items from, uh, we have items from all over the United States, but with a particular focus on the Sacramento area and, and California. Uh, so lots of train accidents. Um, one, one poor unlucky fellow that caught my eye, Maddie M. Moore toward the top here, um, died from lobar pneumonia followed by being accidentally struck by a motorcycle. That's bad luck. 
Um, the other thing that really uh, stood out to me uh, was the number of people die, who died from drinking denatured alcohol. As you probably know, um, this would have been during the middle of prohibition when the purchase of alcohol for drinking was illegal. Uh, so, uh, but people still needed alcohol for cleaning purposes. So alcohol that was sold for cleaning purposes had chemicals added to make it taste bad or even be poisonous, but people would still drink it and there were deaths from drinking denatured alcohol, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to move along here. Um, oh, I just want to want to make sure there's nobody left waiting. To be allowed in. Looks like we're good. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about our monthly genealogy programs. Most of you are pretty familiar with these. Uh, you know that they cover a wide variety of genealogical subjects presented by genealogy experts, with the exception of this one, of course, hosted by me, um, presented online via Zoom, and they're, they're gonna be on the third or fourth Saturday of each month from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Um, and uh, you register to attend it via the events program calendar on our website at saclibrary.org. And here's what you're all waiting for. This is our schedule of upcoming programs. Uh, you know about next month's uh, obituaries the dead said with speaker Glenda Gardner Lloyd one of our great local people, uh, November 19th, that one is. Then uh, Lisa Gorell is going to be presenting in the news, finding tales of your ancestors in newspapers. That's one of the things I find the most interesting. Great stories there. Um, and then January 28th, the first one of next year, 2023, indentured servants and apprentices with speaker Catherine Marshall, PhD. Um, one of my ancestors, uh, Nicholas Munger, uh, came over in the 1600s as an indentured servant. Uh, then um, Mary Sales, it, her, uh, her talk that was originally scheduled for today has been rescheduled for March 25th. What city directories can tell us? And we have a, a nice set of city directories that I'll be talking about in, in just a few minutes uh, here in the Sacramento room that could be very useful to you. And then we have another two part series from Madeline Yanoff um, about uh, migration uh, routes. Um, the first one is going to be, uh, she calls them ancestral road trips, migration routes east of the Miss Mississippi on April 22nd, and then uh, west of the Mississippi on May 20th. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the Sacramento Room. If you haven't visited the Sacramento Room, you certainly should. It's a very interesting place. You can learn a lot about local history. And if your ancestors um, happen to be in the Sacramento area, you might even find out that, um, uh, that, that we have something on them. It can happen. I have found things for people before. So it houses the special collections of the Sacramento Public Library. It's where we collect and preserve Sacramento's history. It's located in the original reference room of the 1918 Carnegie City Library on the second floor here at the Central Library. And it's open Tuesday through Thursday and Saturday, 1 to 6 p.m. So it's not open all the hours that our, our Central Library is open. Limited number of hours. So it closed on Fridays, unfortunately. It's 
So our special collection and collections include the Sacramento Collection, which is of course focused on local Sacramento history, then the California Collection that's focused on a little further afield on California history. The special collection and archives are for the history of the Sacramento Public Library itself. Then we have a collection on uh, printing and book arts history that's very interesting, but doesn't have much to do with genealogy. And then our Sacramento Area Authors Collection, our Sacramento Musicians and Songwriters Collection. Then we have the pamphlet files. Those are basically folders um, full of um, clippings from newspapers and magazines and, and, and uh, pages photocopied from various sources on um, various topics of, uh, of, of historical interest, local historical interest, um, local uh, people of the Sacramento area, places, events, subjects. It's a good starting point for doing research on one of these subjects. So of special interest to genealogists, our city directories are very, very uh, useful. Um, we have local yearbooks, a lot of local yearbooks, not, not full runs, but we have pretty sizable runs going back uh, pretty far. We don't have so many uh, recent ones because we depend on donations for those. And uh, also check out our digital uh, collections on our, our website at saclibrary.org. Uh, you go to our, our, our uh, page on the Sacramento room. Our digital collections do include some city directories that have been digitized and some local yearbooks. We would love to do more, but um, as, as I said before, digitizing is very expensive and time consuming. And you can also run into copyright issues. So um, our, our earliest city directory is from 1851. And these are, uh, these are some more um, really old uh, city directories. You can see 1913, 14, 15, 17, 18. Those are really interesting uh, to look through. Um, and then, um, some that are just old um, from the 50s and 60s. We have we have most uh, we have most years, um, and I I believe I believe they're in the catalog. But we have a, a pretty uh, a pretty good run of of these. Not not very many holes at all, and and some of the holes are because there was no city directory published. Uh, they were uh, they were um, uh, they were produced by uh, by private companies, and they act, went they actually um, uh, uh, went around and and collected information from people, and people shared information about themselves, a lot more information about themselves than you would expect to be shared today. Um, these particular ones we're looking at now are our uh, suburban. Uh, Sacramento suburban directories that are outside the city itself. I don't think they ever worked in conjunction with the census takers. Not certain of that, of course. And then we also have more recent um, phone books. Hey, good to know about that Grant Union High School uh, Museum. Um, so let's get an idea of what's in uh, these, uh, these city directories. Let's look in one of the Sacramento suburban uh, directories for 1957 and find out, let's find out who lived at 4833 North Avenue Carmichael in 1957. People who are doing house history, someone who's bought a, a, an old house and wants to find out more about it, can find out who lived in that house at, at, on various, uh, at various years. And, and a lot more than that, in fact. Uh, let's, let's take a look. So here's North Avenue. 
look, let's look, look down 4833. We see there's uh, Harold M. Davis, uh, who was at that address. And also there is a, um, he must have uh, run a little, run a farm out of there, Doan Agricultural Services Incorporated Farm Management. And the phone number is the same for, for both of them. That's uh, Ivanhoe 79740. That's using the old uh, um, uh, telephone exchange uh, terminology there. I think, I think that's uh, the IV is 48. So once you've got, so this is in the back part of the, um, of the city directory. So once you look that up, you can go to the earlier part and look up the name. So here we find Davis. Now we're going to look down for Harold M. There's Harold M. K. His wife was named Marie. That's what that means in the parentheses. He was a farm manager for Doan Agricultural Services Incorporated. We kind of knew that already. Um, he's, the, he's the head of household at 4833 North Avenue, and the C means that's in Carmichael. So if we look up at some of these others, we'll see that um, these very often include the person's uh, profession, or the, the job they did and where they worked quite frequently. So here's this George H. Uh, Davis, ge geologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. Um, uh, Gerald W. Davis, his wife is named Lillian. He's a salesman with Insurance Securities Incorporated. So there's a lot of information that you can get about people. And this could be really helpful to you uh, in uh, researching your ancestors. Okay, so then we have uh, lots of great yearbooks. This is a yearbook from Sacramento High School. It's called The Review from 1925. And wouldn't you like to see what uh, hairstyle your grandmother or great grandmother uh, had when she was in high school? This is the, this is the graduating class here. And let's look at another one. Greenback Notes from 1956, San Juan Union High School. And there are their outstanding seniors of 1956. All right, well, let's move on to our newspaper archives. Great way to learn about history, down and dirty. So um, our Sacramento Bee, the Sacramento Bee is available online through our website. Um, Newsbank is the company that, uh, that we get it from. It is searchable, text searchable. So all of it has been, um, uh, has been has gone through an, 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 an optical character reading process so that it's searchable. We have the digitized scans of the original paper for 1857 to 1983 and for 2016 to 2017, in, uh, in, in, into 2017, not all the way through. So what about this hole here? 1984 to 2015, we have text only of articles written by Sacramento Bee staff. So um, nothing from a wire service. There are no obituaries, no classified ads, no comics, you know, nothing like that. Just the text of articles written by bee staffers. So um, that's, that's a big hole and that's a concern if you're looking for obituaries. You won't, you won't find obituaries for those years. And then 2017 to present, we have the complete digital edition. So we're, we're back to having the complete digital editions and that's what we'll have from now on.
Now, what we do if we, if we have to deal with that gap from 1984 to 2015 is we go to microfilm. And we do have the Sacramento Bee on microfilm from 1857 to 2015. And we have the Sacramento Union on microfilm 1851 to January 1994 when they closed up shop. And we have a number of other local papers on microfilm and that includes the Sacramento Transcript, the Daily Democratic State Journal and the Galt Herald and there are others as well. Um, this is not complete. Um, uh, there are others. Uh, I think there's um, a weekly newspaper from Orangevale. There's one called the, Saf uh, the uh, Sacramento Observer that was an African-American newspaper. Um, very interesting. And these are available on the third floor of Central Library. And we have microfilm readers available so that you can, you can come in, you can request um, a spool of microfilm from us for a particular newspaper for a particular date. And you can sit down and you can go through it yourself. And there, there are two stations, nice computerized stations. You can, you can search through, you can uh, scan an individual article, you can print it out, you can save it to USB. Much fun to be had there. And we have something new on our website, newspapers.com, the California collection. This is a searchable online archive of over 400 California newspapers uh, from 1851 to 2009. Obviously, they're not all from 1851 to 2009. And also, it's not always complete runs of these papers, but a lot of small, small town newspapers. Uh, it's uh, a, a lot of stuff that uh, is, is hard to find. It would be hard to find otherwise. And you can, you can go online on our website, search for obituaries, marriage announcements, birth announcements, and more. And you, you do need um, one of our library cards or an e-card to do this. And, and the same for the, for the Sacramento Bee Online. Okay. Now let's talk about our genealogy databases. So of course we have Ancestry. I think most of you are familiar with Ancestry. It's available in the library only at any branch. You don't have to have a library card to use it, but you do have to come in to one of our library branches. Of course, there are billions of free records from all around the world, census and vital records, immigration and passport records, just too many things for me to enumerate uh, here. Um, we also offer Heritage Quest, and that one is available online. So you can use that one from home with your library card or e-card, and that is a subset of Ancestry. So it has, you're not able to go in and search on particular names and so forth in the same way that you can with Ancestry, but they have a lot of a lot of the records that are in Ancestry. So like US and Canada census records, city directories. So a lot of city directories, they don't have as many city directories for Sacramento as we do, but they do have um, city directories. So you can find uh, a number of our city directories online there. Uh, military records, US Indian census rolls, US Freedmen's Bank record, US wills and probate records, um, uh, there are yearbooks um, online. I think Heritage Quest has them too. I know Ancestry does. Um, there was also a database that we, we did have available, American Ancestors. We had it available in a very limited way. You could only come to the, um, to the central branch uh, to use it and you had to request the login and only one person could be logged in at a time. It really got almost no use um, it's, it's focused on the Northeast, uh, a lot of the colonial stuff, um, but we've, uh, we've, we've dropped it now because it's, there just wasn't any uh, real demand for it. 
So now let's move on to obituary searches, how I go about doing obituary searches. So when I receive an obituary request, the first thing I do is jump onto Ancestry and I see what I can find there. I try to find a US Social Security death index or California death index record. So I confirm date of death and get additional information such as date and place of birth, mother's maiden name, last residence, et cetera. All those things are really helpful uh, for making sure that I have the right person. So, um, so if, you're, if you're sending in a request, the bare minimum that I need is the date of death um, and, the person's, and the person's name. Uh, it's much better if I can get, well, and, and I definitely need to know that it's in the Sacramento area so that I know that we have it covered. But um, date of birth is really helpful. Place of birth can be helpful. Um, names of, uh, of name of spouse, things like that. All that stuff can be really uh, helpful in making sure that I have the right person. Um, if they died at a, a time when we have uh, um, the, the online um, uh, uh, Sacramento Bee available for, for, for obituaries, I have a little more flexibility in being able to search and, and, find, uh, and find people if I don't know the date of death. But very often, if you're not quite sure, I can confirm a date of death through these records. And so um, Ancestry is really useful for that. Also, find a grave records. If you haven't uh, used find a grave, um, that's a great tool to use in um, researching, um, uh, researching obituaries and so on. Sometimes uh, the person um, entering the find a grave record will have even um, uh, placed the obituary in the find a grave record. So that makes it really easy. Um, find a grave is, is, is all done by volunteers. Um, and one really interesting thing, if you find a, a, a well done find a grave record for one of your relatives, and maybe there'll be even links to other relatives, you can tell which volunteer posted that find a grave record. And if that volunteer has posted several records for your family, in, in Find a Grave. What you can do is register for the Find a Grave site yourself, and then you can send that volunteer a message through Find a Grave, and you might be able to find out more information from them. So that's a very good uh, method of possibly finding um, uh, collaborators for your genealogy search. So um, as I've mentioned before, the date of death determines whether we search our Sacramento Bee online archives or go to microfilm to search the Sacramento Bee and or the Sacramento Union. So um, for an online archive search, I use keywords to search for an obituary, funeral notice or death notice. And that can be simple if the name is, is distinctive, but it can be really hard if it's a common name. You can imagine how hard it would be to just uh, do a search for, for John Smith. Um, also, sometimes if their name is a common word, that can make it a lot more difficult. Um, sometimes it can be uh, it can be helpful to put uh, put quotation marks around uh, the first and last name so that you only find them when they're together. But that can uh, that can leave out um, records that might be be useful too. So I tend to to use a mix of techniques and see what, uh, what pops something up. And of course, narrowing that date range searched is uh, really helpful. Um, I try not to make my initial search too narrow because I like to see if something will serendipitously pop up some, uh, some news item about the deceits, deceased. Sometimes there'll be a news item um, about the person uh, bec becoming ill or having an accident, uh, you know, leading up to the action, you know, actually before the date of death. Um, so, so I like to um, to see if I can find uh, find extra things like that. And then, if it's a microfilm search, we have to be a little um, we're we're not able to do as much. We need an accurate date of death to do a microfilm search. 
uh, because it's just it's just too time consuming to search otherwise. You're welcome to come in yourself if you're not sure of the date of death. Come in yourself and and search through the newspaper uh, microfilm. Uh, but but we just can't do that. We need an accurate date of death. And we'll search through two weeks following the date of death. And that's, if, if there's an obituary, that's pretty certain to find it. So uh, for our searches, for our, um, for our own uh, purposes, and if, and if you're doing searches yourself, it's important to know where in the paper obituaries, death notices, and funeral notices are found so you can minimize search time. Obituaries usually have their own section. Uh, death and funeral notices are often in the classified ads section. And then there are sometimes regular news articles pertaining to the death. Sometimes there's an accident. Sometimes there's, you know, there's something worse, a murder or something like that. You never know. Um, uh, someone has suggested billion graves. Okay, good. I'll have to check that out. Make a note of that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try an obituary search, but I'm going to change the order of this just a little bit just because of my um, Uncertain about uncertainty about my uh, my screen sharing. I have to switch to a different um, uh, to a different tab on this, and um, I'm going to cover this other thing first. So we're going to take a look at, at how to do a search um, uh, in our uh, in our Sacramento Bee online. But first, I want to look at this other example, uh, Carl Strobel who died uh, 15th of October, 1908. Um, this goes along with what I was talking about, how there are different sorts of, uh, different kinds of articles that you might find. Um, for October 15th, we've, I found an obituary. For October 16th, I found the funeral notice. For December 24th, I found a real estate transfer. And then for December 29th, I found a notice to creditors. So. This is all useful information if you're trying to find out more about your ancestor that has died. So there's the obituary, pretty standard. It really um, it, it, it tells, tells a good bit about his life. Um, coming to, from this company to, to, to Germany, where he was employed with the Carmichael uh, company. Um, his uh, relationship with the local uh, German uh, community, member of the Sacramento uh, uh, Turnverein, and then uh, a bit about um, uh, the people he's left behind, uh, Emma e. S his wife, Emma E. Strobel, and his children, Mrs. J.C. Ng, Mrs. C.E. Thielen, Carl A. and Frank J. Strobel. So there's another Carl Strobel here, Carl A. Strobel. And that's important to, to take note of um, for some of these others here, some of these other articles. And this is the funeral notice. Uh, little, some more of the same information about relatives, but then uh, information about um, the, the services and the funeral home and and uh, and where where he's to be buried. Um, and then there's this um, this real estate transfer. C. E. Thielen, one of the daughters, to M. A. Ng, another daughter. Carl A. Strobel, a son, and Frank J. Strobel. So there's a, uh, a piece of being property, a piece of property that's being passed to the other ones. Perhaps uh, C.E. Thielen uh, received um, property that she's now um, uh, dividing up for her uh, siblings. And then this notice to creditors is is interesting because um, you you find out um, 
who the, the executors of the will are. Here's uh, Carl A. Strobel and Clara A. Thielen. We actually find out her first name here for the first time. So all this stuff is very interesting. So let's go ahead and back up to that other one. All right, Albert Vincent Gao, uh, date of death, 10 May, 1964. Okay, so go to our website. Are, are, did you see the, uh, the change of uh, tab? Did everyone see that? Can someone let me know? You should be seeing uh, the Sacramento Public Library website, I hope. Anyone, is anyone seeing it? Okay, very good, okay, great. So um, once you're on our website, saclibrary.org, you go to books and media. Try that again, there we go. Um, So then we go to magazines and newspapers here. And I'll scroll down. Sacramento B, there's access to archives there. And oh, if we look just a little bit further down, we see newspapers.com California collection. Don't forget about that. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I've already uh, found uses for that. So I'm, I'm very happy we've added that one. So, okay, I'm gonna click on access to archives because I'm at a branch of the Sacramento Public Library. I'm gonna go straight into the archives, but you will be asked to enter your library card number and your PIN at this point. Okay, so I think that was Albert. It doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. Albert Vincent Gao, I'm just going to do a quick, I'm not going to bother with any quotes to start with. And sometimes I might, I might want to leave out, um, might want to leave out the middle name. Uh, okay, so we got a bunch of stuff here. Um, I'm going to limit the, uh, limit the time frame here. So let's just say October. And I'm just going to do it all the way to uh, I'm take the caps lock off. November 1964. See what we get. Okay. What did I do wrong? Because I know what I'm supposed to get here. Um, Nineteen sixty four. There we go. Not sure. Ah, okay. I misremembered the date. Here we go. So, um, it's May eleventh, nineteen sixty four. So we see two entries, and this is, I think this is just for, uh, for two editions of the Sacramento Bee from the same day, maybe morning and evening edition, something like that. So they're just the same. So then you can click on this to drill down into it, click on the title.
There we go. We see the hits there. I don't see Vincent here, just a V, but we got it anyway. Maybe there's Vincent somewhere else on the page or. Anyway, we've got that. And now I'm going to do it. I'm going to save a clip from this. So you go up here where the scissors are, click that, and then click select clip to download or print. And okay, there's my. Of things in my way that I have to move. Okay. So we just arrange that so that it covers what we want. And then uh, you can print it or you can download the PDF. That's usually what I do because I'm usually sending it to someone an email. Download. We have progress bar there. We wait for it to finish. Okay, and then up over here, I just click open file. And now I'm seeing the PDF that we have. And it's a nice little PDF that is well labeled. And it gives the, it says it's from the Sacramento Bee from May 11th, 1964 on page 28. And the numbering of the page is just simple numbering starting from, from the beginning of the newspaper. You're, you're familiar with newspapers that have like an A section, a B section, and so forth. So you might have page B8. You don't get this with this. You, you just get um, the number from the beginning. And then I can save it. Uh, just this thing that looks like a floppy disk with a little uh, pencil on it. I click that. And uh, and uh, and it gives it gives a, a, a good useful name to the file also mentioning Sacramento B, May 11th, 1964, page 28. So that's all really helpful. So I'm just going to cancel that. Okay, so that is uh, that's my presentation, and I'm going to open things up for questions here. Okay, let's see, I just need to... Okay, uh, here we go. I'm gonna stop screen sharing. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll take your questions and I will go ahead and... Um, and allow people to unmute themselves as well. Okay, um, any questions? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you appreciate the, the pace that I do things at. I've worked with people in person a lot and, uh, and, and that's why I go at that pace because I, I kind of know what, what people appreciate and it's what I appreciate too. Uh, the library does accept donations of genealogy uh, related books. Um, they, they'll come to me and, and, and I'll evaluate them for, for inclusion. Um, so uh, yes, you can uh, go ahead and, uh, and, and, and contact me through contact at saclibrary.org and I'd be happy to uh, discuss uh, accepting your, uh, your donated books. Any other questions? Dave, I have a question. Um, I have a relative, um, Colonel Henry Wagner, who uh, served on several, oh, uh, 1860s, 70s, maybe. He was all over the West. Um, and I think at some point I did go through some sacrament or some newspapers from California. Mm -hmm. And I think I found his name, but of course I did not document where I found the information. Mm -hmm. So um, he was in the military. Uh, he probably got in the 
his name in the paper at some point. Yeah. Uh, he did end up down at the Presidio sending the soldiers off to the Spanish-American War. Mm -hmm. And I think he was in charge of the Presidio at that point. I'm not positive. So um, any thoughts on how I would go about researching him? Well, um, it's it's possible that there was a mention of him in the Sacramento Bee. Um, there, um, the Sacramento Bee often did publish bits of, of news uh, from San Francisco. Um, you could uh, also uh, contact the uh, San Francisco Public Library. Um, they probably have um, uh, they they no doubt have. Um, archives of the Chronicle and other local newspapers there, so th that would be that would be something you could give a try to. Um, and then uh, that newspapers.com. Um, one one thing nice about it is you can do a single search that uh, can cover uh, multiple uh, newspapers. So um, yeah, those are all uh, those are all very uh, helpful uh, things to to go along with. Um, I think you, you uh, ancestry might allow you to find some of the the military, uh, the, the military no. service records. We have um, that information, okay. but I'm I'm looking for something when he and his family were out here in California. I Stories. cannot remember the mm -hmm. name of the fort. I think it was Bidwell up there in the corner of Oregon, mm -hmm. Nevada, California. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so, um, so. That's where newspapers.com can can come in handy because they have coverage for a lot of of small local newspapers. So that would definitely be something to check out as well. Oh, great! Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. And and you are of course welcome to uh, to to contact us for a little help as well. So this is all this is all stuff you know I'm I'm learning right along with the rest of you. It's uh, this is all very interesting. The thing that interests me most, honestly, is uh, finding things in newspapers because that's where the stories are. Any other? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, here's something. Is the city directory the best way to find out the names of all the high schools in Sacramento, 1944 to 1946? Um, yeah, I, I think that would be uh, that would be a, a good way uh, to to find a, a lot of the uh, a, a, a lot of the high school names. Um, absolutely, and no, we don't charge for uh, city directory uh, uh, lookups. Um, uh, you, you, you can certainly come in, you can look at the city directories all you want. Um, if you have something that is a fairly um, simple, straightforward question for us, um, we, we, can do a, we can do a lookup for you. We, we can't do um, uh, a, a lot of extensive research, but we, we, can do, we can do a bit. But yeah, you can certainly come in and check out the city directories. Also, you can find some of the city directories in Ancestry as well. Um, and then here's another question here. At one point, I thought there was at the main library a genealogist one could reserve time with for specific help. Is this still available? Is it available at any of the branches? That was a pre-COVID thing, and we do still mention that on our website. I have a, a, a couple of volunteers that I will, if someone has, uh, if someone needs that kind of uh, help from a genealogist, I can I can pass them on to one of these two volunteers. Mary Sales is one of them. Uh, so uh, that is that is something that we we can do. It's still it's still just done virtually. We we aren't having uh, a genealogist. Um, that is is available on site. We we did that on Sundays, and we're not open on Sundays anymore. Um, Sundays were were really handy because there was free street parking at that time. So I'm not sure when we'll uh, when we're likely to resume uh, that, but um, uh, we do have those two volunteers that uh, I can put you in touch with. Any more questions?
Okay, well, I, I hope that you've all um, learned a little bit more about our offerings here. Um, and that you'll um, and that you'll uh, take advantage of some of our resources. And I appreciate all of you um, uh, bearing with me on, in this. It was uh, um, I didn't have a, a lot of um, uh, a, a lot of notice. You know, people people just get sick and and. Not much to be done about that. Um, I did have, th this is a, a presentation that I've given in a little bit different form before. So I had something to start with to prepare. And I appreciate, I appreciate how many of you have uh, stayed around to listen to me rather than to um, uh, Mary Sales. I'm, gl I'm glad you thought it was helpful, Linda. I, I appreciate all your kind words. Hey, uh, did everyone get um, get the handout that needed the handout? I can post it again. Let me post the handout again. All 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 this information was in the handout. And um, the recording of this is going to be uh, put on our YouTube channel. Okay, there's our handout. And there's where to find our YouTube channel. And there's our, uh, our contact email address. Okay, well, thank you all for attending. It's been a real pleasure. Well, thank you for all the kind words. All right, I'll see you next month. Ah, oh, here's something interesting. Root Cellar has a Sacramento County Coroner's Record Collection 1887 to 1969 available. Does Root Cellar have a website? Okay. Okay, thank you for, thank you for that information. Okay, everyone, um, have a great day. I'm gonna stop recording.